for today's workshop. We are very, very thankful for their hard work to bring groups to Europe all these years with highest level of professionalism. We understand our groups possibly will not have a safe trip and we hope that uh, the two leader work will continue very soon to Europe and beyond. We have planned several workshops for you. Today's session, we will focus possibly on one of the most beautiful Nordic destinations, Norway. What makes the session even more special is the fact that we can welcome Masako San, the leader of our Norway office in person, to deliver us for us today this workshop. So I'm very glad to have a, a destination insider from ve our very own office in Norway, based in Oslo, for today's session. Last but not least, before I go into a short presentation, I want to extend a big thank you to Karen, Mandy, and Romy, and the entire Vietnam Indochina team to make this workshop today happen. As I said, there will be more to come, but most importantly now, I would like to share with you some of the insights of Kuoni. As you know, today's session is under the umbrella Partnership and Compassion. We started this project some six weeks ago, and all we wanted to achieve is to build back a bridge to our most valuable clients during these challenging times. So it's a workshop campaign where we bring our destination offices together with all our clients worldwide. So please be welcome for today's session. Karen, can you move the slide? So Kwoni, right? I think the company and its mission has not changed for the last 40 years. As you all know, Kwoni as a company has started their Asia business more than 60 years ago. And all, all this while, our mission was to create truly inspiring travel and nice experience that go beyond expectations. We have grown our team, in particular in Southeast Asia, over the last 10 years, threefold. So we're talking currently about a, a team set up of nearly 300 staff. So and a large, large team based in Vietnam, looking after Vietnam and the fast growing markets like Laos, Myanmar, and Cambodia. Next. Kwoni as a global organization, right? To give you a little bit an idea of the dimension, we did operate in 2019 1 billion euro of business into Europe, greater Europe, and other parts of the world. We are proud to be the employer of 2,750 staff around 34 countries. It's very important. For, for you to understand is Kwoni's business model. Kwoni's business model has two fundamentals. Number one, we try to do business from Kwoni to so You have a chance to talk your business needs in Vietnam with our own Kwoni team. And you will be operated by our very own teams in destination. So for more than 90% of our 34 destinations, we use our very own setup. Secondly, what is also very important, since we have started our business in Asia, we always did stick to our B2B business model. So we want to be the partner of travel agents in Vietnam, in Myanmar, in Cambodia, to grow your business. So we do not have any intentions to go into B2C. Karen, next. Now, the numbers here you see on the screen, this is a snapshot of some, some figures which should give you a little bit of an idea of the size and of the legacy of the enterprise. Together, 
And together that means JTB to Mare and Kony, which is a is is a group of companies. We have more than 264 years of combined experience in travel industry. That makes us by far the most uh, established travel enterprise globally. We belong to the JTB group of companies, and uh, you all understand that it's a very strong, financially sound enterprise, which can also overcome stressful times like we are currently facing. You're, you're dealing with a very solid, well-financed enterprise with a, with a strong, strong focus on people. Last year, we did operate about one 8.1 million of room nights. This is a large number. And these room nights were booked only for groups. So you must understand that our business focus will remain on group travel business as, as we talk. Our focus, our strategies for 2020, which is obviously a special year, 2021 will always be to develop group travel. Group travel for small groups, group travel for incentive, we do ad hoc business, we are partner of big series agents, so anything group, we are strongly positioned due to our extremely large hotel inventories and allotments in destination. We have currently a contract base of 4,200 hotels only in Europe. And what makes us maybe different to, to other operators is the fact that we contract across several quality levels. So from two star, three star, four star, five star, five star plus properties. And we obviously have a very strong allotment for uh, group travel inventory. So our focus obviously is to, 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 to be the fastest and the most comprehensive. Uh, operator in regards to hotel allocation, hotel uh, uh, availability in Europe. Coaches are an important part of, of, the, of our business. In the high season, we operate up to 1,500 coaches every day on the road. Uh, I think we also, we have in many markets, we also have livery coaches where companies have their own very own coaches on the road with their own branding. This is something we have started some years back. So some of our clients, they have their own coaches in Europe with their very own corporate identity reflected on, on our buses. And uh, we have more, more than 50,000 groups a year. We, we operate into any of our Europe destination. Our Europe network at the moment consists of, of uh, 48 office locations, which are all owned by our very own Pony uh, JTB teams. Next. Now, obviously, there are different types of businesses, and we're also proud to be a pioneer in the mice industry in Indochina. I think we have supported many of you in today's call for your incentive groups, so we have a strong legacy in organizing meetings and events. Uh, we, have, uh, we are the proud host of many, many big football teams when, when they have the Champions League game. So uh, sports, sports incentive groups are critical for our MISA organization. And we also expo expose to organize Congress of smaller and uh, medium size to large size scales for big uh, multinational companies in our destination. Next can. So before I hand over now to, to the destination uh, specialist, I would like to wrap up to explain you what this partnership and compassion campaign really wants to achieve. Obviously, as I said, we want to build the bridge back to you whilst we are working from home, some of us, whilst the business is down. And what we want to do for you is to give you education. We want to help you to, to understand what we can do in any of our destination. Today we talk about Norway, tomorrow is another destination. So we want to share with you 
our know-how. And the way we share it is by bringing you together with our specialists in destination. So you will have access to the top, top people of our company whilst we go through this step of uh, virtual workshop. So education for you is key for this campaign. Secondly, even more important is to get ready for the business revival. We understand that COVID-19 hopefully will disappear anytime soon. And we have now a window of opportunity to get ready, to make our itineraries adjusted, to start to prepare new products. For the moment, the market's coming back and we see a revival. So to get us ready for a market revival is the second objective and the third objective is to share with you opportunities. Opportunities can be many things, can be new destination IDs, can be new experience in destination, maybe we talk about new venues to host incentive, maybe there are new hotels which are, 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 are focusing on, on our type of, of business. So these are the three objectives. What is equally important is that after this virtual webinars we stay connected with you the sales team on the karen will reach out back to you and we can discuss individually whatever you wish to discuss in regards to upcoming business you are dealing with the campaign has as i said started uh, some six weeks ago we were able to talk to more than four thousand clients so far with today's session, I'm very proud to announce we have another 150 participants coming from Indochina. So numbers are going up. So we expect by the end of the campaign that we were able to talk to help to educate more than 10,000 agents only in Asia. So thank you ever so much for making time today. Thank you ever so much for giving Kony the chance to work with you all these years. We value uh, your partnership and your support during good and during not so good times. Last but not least, if you like what we are doing, please go to your social media channels, look into your Instagram, your LinkedIn account, find us on the Global Travel Expert and start to like and share us. With this, I have now the privilege to, to give back the floor to Karen and Masako-san for the delivery of the first uh, virtual workshop for Indochina. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Rito. So now, uh, don't let anyone waste for a long time. Masako-san, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Hands over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think the screen sharing is disabled. <laughs> Can it be? Can you share the screen from yourself? Please. I think host the disabled participant screen sharing. Would you be able this? Yeah. Just wait a moment, please. Sure. So while we are waiting, uh, thanks for your time, everybody. Uh, my name is Masako, and I am Destination Operations Manager in Oslo office in Norway. I don't know how the temperature is in your place, but at the moment here in Oslo, it's beautiful, sunny, blue sky, 13 degree. We call it coming close to summer temperature, so it's not that hot, hot, but this is good enough for us. It's a beautiful day. And then... Uh, the situation is changing all the time, so today I'm just hoping that we can share the situation in Norway and some beautiful places and some of the uh, souvenirs, maybe the shopping opportunities or restaurants and food, so that you can get a little bit taste of Norway on the webinar and you can just maybe build up the plan to get to Norway. So while uh, Karen is working hard to uh, do this screen sharing. We'll see how it goes. Hi, Smart Circle. Try yourself, please. You now call us, please. Yes. Okay. Share. Can everybody see the screen? 
yes, we are getting there, Masako san. You are getting there. Good, good. Yes, we can see now. Masako san, maybe you put the microphone slightly higher up, then maybe the, the sound quality maybe can be improved. How is it? Is it again it's uh, better? It's better. Better? Okay. Yes, good. yes. Just maybe before we, we start to, to, to go into the deep dive, I think what is important from our side, obviously, I think Scandinavia is a very strategic area for us. So Masako san will share with you also where we have our offices. And as I said, we have a long, long legacy operating business in Scandinavia. And obviously, it's, it's a great time now for us to share with you our know-how and our experience. This is actually, as I lost, statement back to you, Masako san. And thanks a lot for making time for us. Okay, thank you, Reto. And I can't agree with you more. Norway is one of the most beautiful places on earth, I think. I'm originally from Japan, but I fell in love with Norway as a country, not a Norwegian boy, but I fell in love with the landscape. So I came here and then have kept loving it, being here. And I think Norway is one of the best destinations for you. So where to go next is the big, big question for everybody. And I can show you what probably after all those uh, corona and home quarantine, we've been uh, maybe wanting to go to experience relaxed situation, the nature, space, clean air, fresh water, freedom. So this is uh, something that we have been actually really wanting to share with you. Masako so, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt again. There is a little bit of a clicking uh, sound, maybe because you touch uh, your microphone. I think if okay. you don't touch it, then it's much better. Because this is falling down a bit. Is that better? Okay. I'll yes. try. Okay, let's try again. So this is the uh, population density in Europe and the northern part of Europe. And you need a space. You don't want so many people around you. Then we have top six destinations in Europe starting from Iceland and Norway, Finland, Sweden, Estonia, Russia. They are the top six countries with least densely populated uh, places in Europe. So Norway is number two. And just to, oops, sorry, just to show you um, how it is in uh, Hanoi, it's 2,350 people per square kilometers, whilst we have 15 people per square kilometers. So you get the idea of how much space we have around us. And then, as Reto said, we have extensive offices here in the Nordic region. So you can see all these are our own offices. And we have offices in all the capitals in Nordic countries, and including the Russian Baltic. So together, we have a big, big uh, staff and resources here. And then this is why. I think maybe you can maybe work with us. Uh, over 40 years of experience, it's almost closer to 50 years, some of the offices. So we have much, uh, we have a great experience and all together we are about 530 uh, people. And I can just say that we are all passionate and uh, very professional, hopefully. And then the, uh, it's great for you to actually have the cross-border tours between Norway and the other countries because we have all the offices. So you can have a one-stop shop for region north to connect all the dots. You don't have to go to different operators, DMCs. And we have a very, very strong presence in local offices. So we have a local product development and procurement team to deal with the local partners. So we know them very, very well, and that's very important. And of course, because of that, we have very strong purchasing power. So that the Reto mentioned about the allotment and in the Scandinavia alone, we have 1,650 allotment rooms daily, uh, including some of the popular igloo properties. So if you're gonna join on the other time for this nation uh, webinar for Finland, then you can get to know more about the igloo properties. And then I'm gonna wake on to welcome you to Norway. Uh, Norway is far up north, you can see in this map. Uh, Norway is in the middle of the world map, Atlas, and then you can see how high up that is. So uh, these area like Russia, Canada, USA, they have like a northern part and Norway is really, really above uh, 
above from here, it's above in the Arctic Circle. And then a little bit about Norway in general, um, monarchy, so we have royal family, which are, which they are really loved by people, and population of 5.3 million people. Capital is Oslo, where I am now, and the language is Norwegian. Uh, religion is uh, Protestant, and currency is Norwegian krona, and we are a uh, Central European time area, and all those information, and the important thing is that Norway is not a part of EU, but we still do a lot of things together with EU. So we are part of EU, uh, kind of, but not exactly in EU, but many of the rules are same as EU. And then a little bit about the corona situation, uh, because of uh, the uh, government uh, action for encouraging people not to go out. And of course, we have all those measures taken and we have uh, more or less uh, the disease under control. That's what the government is trying to do, of course. And you can see this uh, green line here is the number of infected people. And these are the number of daily infected people. So you can see that it's going down and we are slowly opening the country. So most of the shops have been actually kept open during the time of the crisis. And I have been doing the shopping as usual. We were not controlled or restricted to go out to do the shopping and daily work, but we were, of course, told to keep the distance and hand washing and everything like the other countries have been doing. And most of the hotels have been closed, but starting to open now. Many restaurants have been closed, but some were kept up open actually. And now they are slowly opening. So we are getting the news every day that we are opening. We are slowly opening. And most of the schools have been reopened uh, in April and May. So children are out on the street going to school after some time of the homeschooling. And we still are, of course, told to keep one meter social distance. Now, the latest news last week, we had a press conference and uh, we are considering to actually continue the quarantine and the closed border situation until the 20th of August. And by the 15th of June, decision for Nordic countries, the nearby countries will be made. And by 20th of July, decision for nearby European countries will be made. So events up to 200 people will be allowed from 15th of June and many places like swimming pools or amusement parks, they, were, they are allowed to open slowly and people are now encouraged to have a domestic holidays. So Norwegians this year will have the holidays of their time, lifetime in Norway. And then I just wanted to share this personal picture. Maybe this, the left picture is the one that I took actually this morning. I took the train to city center to the office and you can see that the people are actually uh, sitting apart from each other and there are seats that says like, don't sit on this chair. And there are signs and stickers on the floor telling you to keep the distance of one meter. This picture in the middle I took last week in the cafe and of course, you can see that chairs are kept uh, unused so that you can sit apart from each other. And then this was the street I took on Friday, it was on the main street of Kaliuhan in Oslo. And you can see quite a few people. And as if you don't know anything, if you don't think about anything, then the situation looks pretty much normal on the street. And people are enjoying, but still trying to be careful with the distance and everything. And then why Norway? I think uh, I know that everybody's going to slowly start opening the countries. And it's very important for people to choose the right place to go to. And I understand it's going to be a huge competition. So I have to just uh, think, why do you want to come to Norway if I were you? I think the most important thing for me is, of course, the nature and distance and everything, but also as a country, this is a very, very credible country. You don't have the situation of like uncertainty. Uh, the police and government and the rules and regulations are functioning very well. 
So I don't have any of like those dodgy situation in this country, which is incredibly important in this situation. If anything should happen, you have to have the right information. You shouldn't have the people actually uh, losing the uh, order. And that's very, very important. So I think well-functioning society is really important. So you don't go to the place where you are actually not sure what the situation will be or how the situation will be handled by the government. So that's very, very important. And also the peace is very important. So we have low crime rate, rate and high education. And it's actually interesting to uh, see the white coverage and Wi-Fi as well. And I think it's very important to come to the safe country. And another thing that's good probably for the other people, not for me, who are actually living in Norway, but the currency, the Norwegian krona has weakened dramatically. I have never seen it like this for many, many years. And the last few years, it's been really, really going bad for us and good for the others. So I can just give you the sample of the Euro and the US dollars here. But uh, if you have like a hotel room uh, per person, like 900 Norwegian krona, that was at the worst time, like six, seven years ago, it was actually 121 Euro per person, but now it's actually 81 Euro. So for me, it's expensive to go outside, but for the artists to come to Norway, it's actually cheaper than ever than before. So that's a nice thing to know for you, and it's a sad fact for us. And this is the team. Another reason that you should come to Norway is our team. Of course, we are waiting and eager to welcome you. We are about 27 people, and we are dealing with Norway and Iceland. The office has been since 1978. So these are the people who are actually waiting for you. And then I'm going to go into uh, Norway and take you around Norway. So getting to Norway by air, by sea, by road, by rail. The interesting thing is that you don't always have to actually just drive long distance coach, but to come to Norway, there are many different ways of doing it. But I just had to start checking how it is for you to fly. So this is just a random uh, flight information that I was just trying to check if you were to come to uh, Ho Chi Minh City, to Oslo. And uh, the good one was actually like 15 hours, 15 and a half hours to 90 hours. So it's quite good connection and it's not as long a journey as you might think. So it's a great place to come to Oslo. And then the interesting thing is that you can actually combine, and many of you actually have used this already, but the DFTS Seaways connect uh, Copenhagen in Denmark and Oslo in Norway, so that you can have actually one night overnight cruise from Denmark to Norway. And you actually have the transport and the hotel and entertainment at one go, because you can just enjoy this overnight cruise and arrive in Oslo in the morning. Another one is the rail. Uh, it's also interesting to travel between uh, Norway, of course, domestically by railway, but also the cross-border rails are actually available. So you can come from Sweden side, from Stockholm or Gothenburg by rail to Oslo. Or up north, Narvik and Kiruna in Sweden, that's also connected by rail. So that's also a nice way to enter Norway. And this is uh, where to go to Norway. This is the big question again. And you can see some of the attractions. This map is actually by the airline company called Vidro. And it's showing some of the nice actually things that you can do or you can see in Norway. I love this map. So you are actually coming to probably most likely to the capital of Norway, Oslo green and the blue capital of Norway. The thing that I love about Oslo is actually it's a nice sized city, but it has a great nature around. So you can just look around and you can see, this is like a city center area. You can see from there, the green and the islands, Oslo Fjord, beautiful, beautiful nature around it. So from my place, my flat, I can just go out and within 10 minutes, I reach the lake and the forest, which is also very nice and beautiful architecture as well. So I can show you some of the very, very common sightseeing spots and the place to stop. This is the opera and Vigeland Sculpture Park. And this is another addition, Egerberg Sculpture Park and Holmekola Ski Jump. And the Karl Johan Street is the main street, the Royal Palace and the Akinfis Fortress. 
key hold. This is a real enter somewhere, then these are more or less free sites to include in your site's thing. So Norway is, has a reputation of being very expensive, but you have like a free places to go as well. And the site's thing is as good as uh, you have probably. But you can also, of course, add the museums like a Viking ship museum. There are lots of interesting, interesting museums. I would recommend any of those, but they are just examples of the places that you can include in your itinerary. Uh, more places actually are popping up because they are building the new museum, for Munch Museum and the National Museum. They are not yet open, but they will be open. So when you actually return to Norway or come to Norway for the first time, you might be able to see all those fantastic new uh, buildings as well. And some of the main sites, so Oslo is quite compact, so you can actually see main sites uh, within, actually, if you want to walk, you can walk around, but it's quite an easy place to uh, get to, and you don't have to use a lot of hours and minutes to actually get to the sites. Bergen is the second biggest city, and it's called the Gateway to the Fjords. And uh, as it says, it's very close to the fjords that everybody wants to come to. Bergen is famous for this UNESCO uh, listed Brecken water uh, front area. This is the one. And then the fish market, and you have like a nice cable car to go up to, to see the, enjoy the scenery. And this is the map of Bergen. Another city is uh, Trondheim. And maybe it's not used so much, but this is also a very beautiful and a nice compact uh, city and it has the Nidaros Cathedral which is very important to know and it's very very uh, magnificent building in the city center the heart of Trondheim. So Trondheim is something that maybe not many people have visited so for those who have done Norway already this is the new area maybe you can exp explore. Olesen is also on the west west coast and it's a beautiful beautiful olive town and as you can see the beautiful view from the top the viewing point and then it has aquarium and a nice museum so this is also a nice place to go to on the west coast and i'm going to come back to some itinerary suggestions that include actually all the and Trondheim as well and Stavanger, it's, uh, as you can see on this map, it's on the south uh, coast of uh, southwest of Norway. And it's very famous for this Prekestol land. And also, Shera, uh, this is the great hiking spot. And also a very nice uh, Lisa Fjord, which is here, and I'm going to mention it to you later. So many people actually come to Norway to see fjords. So Sogne Fjord is the one that everybody goes to. And this is the king of the fjords, the one of the deepest and the longest fjords of the world. And you can combine with the scenic uh, railway journey as well. So this is the typical route like a railway and the from railway and cruise. It's called Norway in a nutshell that you see everything about Norway, the beauty of Norway in like a one excursion day. Hadange Fjord is called Queen of the Fjord. It's more like elegant, it's gentle, uh, more maybe gentle landscape, but as beautiful as the Sogne Fjord. And you have the glacier up on the mountain, and you have beautiful uh, orchards and interesting cultural experiences. So Hadange Fjord is also not far from Bergen. So you can see the location of that Hadange Fjord here. Garange Fjord is a more spectacular one. Uh, it's maybe more dramatic than the, any than any other fjords. And you see that the beautiful waterfall, Seven Sisters, and you can do those Garange Fjord cruise uh, trips here, and you enjoy the scenery and the fjords and waterfall and mountains. So that's the location. It's not far from Olesen that I just mentioned, and it's not far from Rauma Railway, which is also famous scenic railway route. Bjorn Fjord is a hidden pearl that not many people have actually experienced, but this is also a nice cruise and they have a daily cruise from Olesen. So this is the one that if you want to go a little bit of off the beat track and want to go somewhere that people haven't been there, then uh, you can just choose this one as well. Beautiful, beautiful fjord. That's the location. 
these of you this nearest vangir that I mentioned so that you can see this Prekestolen rock, the mountain, which is very famous for the hiking and this beautiful fjords. You can also enjoy the daily cruise from Stavanger to this fjord. The location of this one. And then I go up to north, Karashok. I know many people go to Finnish Lapland, but the Norwegian Lapland are also very, very, uh, places are very nice and not as busy as Finnish Lapland. So that's something to remember. Karasuk is a typical, typical uh, uh, Lapland uh, capital of the uh, Sami people in Norway. And it has a beautiful, uh, of course, the uh, parliament for Sami people. And also like uh, attraction place in uh, Karasuk called Sapmi. This is Alta, also in north of Norway and the Norwegian Lapland. And it's called Northern Lights Town. And we have snow hotel here and the cathedral, the church here in the middle of the city. And during the summer and autumn time, you can see this rock carvings on the, on the rock. And this is one of my most uh, favorite museums of all. And it's beautiful scenery. And you can see this one, this is on UNESCO's uh, cultural heritage list and the must place to go to, I think. But when it's the uh, winter, the snow is covering all those rock carvings. So just to remember, just be aware of that. Tromsø is probably the most famous northern capital of uh, Norway. And many people actually go there to enjoy the northern light or midnight sun in summertime. And you can see the beautiful scenery and the winter time, you can do the whale safari from uh, uh, Tromsø. And you can also do King Crab Safari here. Uh, it's a new new thing, but you can start doing that in Tromsø as well. Kirkenes is very famous. It's close to Russian border. You can see that uh, this is Russia already here, and it's close to Russia border. And it has snow hotels, so all the snow activities such as the dog sled, snow scooter, all those things available, and also famous for the King Crab. Northscape is the Europe's northernmost plateau, and you can visit here in the winter time as well. And it's a great northern light spot as well. In summertime, you can enjoy the midnight sun, the sun never sets below the horizon. And in winter time, you can see the northern lights. And you can also brag to your friends that you've been to the northernmost part of Europe. And the King Crab Safari is available here as well. And Lofoten, maybe some of you have heard about Lofoten. It's a postcard landscape, beautiful, beautiful place. Oops, sorry. And uh, famous for drying cod. It's uh, and a very, very nice scenery. It's like a kind of Alps in Norway, but a smaller scale and the beautiful fjords and sea around it. So a great place to go in summertime or wintertime as well for the northern lights. And this is very uh, unique place, but it's not impossible to go to. It's actually quite easy to reach. This is Longyearbyen in Svalbard. You can see on this, uh, I can't have the map. Now I have to have the globe to show you where it is. It's very close to the North Pole. And this is uh, governed by Norway. And this place has uh, really, really interesting things to do actually like, uh, of course, dog sled in winter time, or you can do the cruise, you can see the glacier. And more than anything, you can just say to people that how far north you've been to. Everything in this town is northernmost. It's like a northernmost, uh, like a taxi stop, northernmost ATM, northernmost cinema, northernmost uh, your, uh, kindergarten. So everything you just see in this town is actually northernmost. But it's not hard to get to. It's just a flight away. And uh, this is where actually the polar bears live outside the city. You don't see them, but they are there. And this is also a fantastic, exciting thing to do, to actually be the place in the polar bear region, kingdom of the polar bears. So this is somewhere I really recommend. And you can see uh, the calendar in Longyearbyen because it's far up north, so you have the dark period, but you have also midnight sun period. And the midnight sun doesn't go down to the horizon. It's just going like it's kind of taking a circle above you. 
So it's also very interesting phenomenon that you can experience in Longevian. And then I want to introduce you to National Scenic Route. Uh, this is actually decided by the road authority and the government that they select 18 beautiful, beautiful roads in Norway. So this is like a guaranteed stamped as beautiful ones. And what the interesting uh, thing about this the National Scenic Route is that they, they put a lot of money improving the place, the road, of course, but they made really interesting uh, viewing points everywhere. So you can see this one, like a viewing points that's sticking out on top of the valley to see that scenery. And it's a great collaboration between the architects and the scenery. And this is also very interesting. I'm just mentioning this because uh, this is actually free uh, everywhere you go. So you can actually include those stops and mention in your maybe brochure or website to say that you're going to visit Norway's National Scenic Route and it's free of charge. So I just introduced you to three of those. This is the one Hadange Fjord that I mentioned earlier and you can see that some of the toilets are improved and some of the viewing points are improved. So you can see this red line. So this is the, the logo of the National Tourist Route. So you can just uh, mention this one and you can introduce it and it doesn't cost you anything, which is nice. Atlantic Ocean Road is also described as one of the most beautiful drive in the world sometimes and the top 10 often. And uh, this is the road that you can see that the viewing points are made and you can also enjoy the Norwegian scenery here. Another one is Aulandfjöle, and the famous part is the place is the Stegastein. Here you can see the viewing plateau, platform sticking out, and you can look down on the fjord. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, and it's not far from uh, Flom. <clears throat> so when you do the Flom railway, and when you do the Sognefjord cruise, if you have time, then you can maybe drive up the road and enjoy this view from Stegastein. It's one of the national scenic routes. And then I want to introduce you to uh, four distinctive seasons in Norway. I know that many people think that fjord is for summer and the northern lights in winter, but Norway has four beautiful seasons. And some of the things that you may know already, but some might be new for you. So I'm just going to take you through the four seasons. So to Norway in spring, I'm calling it as a dramatic awakening because the change is uh, huge. It's like a cold, dark winter snow to like a sudden burst of the colors. And you can see the flowers, you can see the green and the green, the fresh uh, tree leaves are really, really nice green. And I'm just uh, saying that if you see this picture, you don't think it's spring, but this is typical spring for Norway because you still have a lot of snow on the top of the mountains. So when you go high up, you see the snow and you have uh, often a lot of water in the waterfall because the snow is starting to, like snow is melting and the waterfall uh, is getting greater and you still see the snow, but you still see the colors at the uh, valleys and the cities. So that's the contrast and it's a really nice season to come to Norway. And this is one of the sample itineraries. Um, uh, just putting it out, but this is actually a typical, typical, normal uh, beginners essential Norway tour. And it's including Hadange Fjord and Sogne Fjord. But if you come like a springtime, like May, like now, then you still see beautiful snow on the top of the mountain. And then you have beautiful uh, color of the fjords. The water is really special in May. It's like a blue green, emerald green type color. And it's a really nice uh, thing to see in springtime and you can include the uh, national scenic route stop as well here stopping by this waterfall and if you're lucky you catch maybe apple flower time it's not like a cherry blossom in japan but the apple flowers are really beautiful in hadange field area or anywhere else in may and then another thing that i wanted to introduce this was actually just this Sunday and this year was totally different from normal situation. But the Norway has a national day on the 17th of May and this is something that it's actually a nice thing to include because Norwegian people are out in a national costume, they have a huge parade, parties, dancing, you have never seen anything like that 
are so many flags on the street. And this is something that it's actually a free entry for the tourist to come to see. And then, uh, of course, you can't drive around with the bus, so you have to stay in cities anywhere in Norway to see the parade. But the nice thing is that actually 17th of May is traditionally very, very empty on the city hotels. The hotels are really, really empty and they would like to have a business. So it's a nice time to actually try to come to Oslo or any other cities or any other place in Norway to see the parade. It's not in Oslo only, but everywhere in Norway, people have parades. And this is another one that I'm just uh, letting you know that Midnight Sun Tour, uh, everybody thinks that it's very difficult to get the space at the hotel in the uh, above Arctic Circle for Midnight Sun Tour, but not many people actually know that Midnight Sun already starts on the 14th of May in Northscape area. So if you wanted to have some tour to Northscape area, then uh, from the middle of May towards the end of May, it's slightly actually, uh, it's more availabilities than usual. And coming like towards the end of May or early June, then the hotels get very, very full. So this is a nice time to actually catch the midnight sun and actually visit North, Northscape. So I'm just mentioning that this is one of the spring uh, suggestions from my side. And then to Norway in summer. This is the, probably the time that everybody wants to come. And this picture is actually Jordanfjord uh, cruise that I mentioned. And you can see the beautiful mountains and the fjord. And what I want to explain to you is that Norway is not all about summer, but summer is of course beautiful, but there are so many other places that you can visit, but the normal places that you normally go to. So there are some places that you can choose and I'm just having one sample itinerary here. Uh, this is a little bit of off the beaten track and discovered part of Norway. And you can start from Trondheim that I mentioned earlier and coming down the west coast to Olesen, you can cover Atlantic Ocean Road, National Scenic Route, and you can go and stay at the uh, west coast towns like Bosnaburg or any other places around here and go into Bergen. So this is something new, but if you guys haven't done the uh, Norway in a nutshell, Southern Field Cruise, you can still add by staying in Bergen multiple nights then you can go to do the Flom Railway, Sognefjord or Hadangefjord. So you can do this unusual trip down West Coast and come to Bergen and do the other usual fjords from Bergen. And also I can mention here that uh, it is really beautiful to actually travel here. And you can also uh, start from like staying in Bergen many nights and do the fjord excursion uh, to Sognefjord or Hadangefjord, that's also possible itinerary without going too many places. You can base yourself in Bergen and do the fjord and the railway journey as well. So this is also a nice itinerary and it's easier maybe for families or older people who don't want to travel a lot uh, to change the hotels. So stay multiple nights in Bergen only kind of itinerary is also recommended. And this is my most favorite season of the year autumn and the colors here is amazing. I am from Japan originally, so I am used to seeing the red colors, but the, here it's more like orange and yellow, especially the yellow colors are really stunning. And the birch trees, you can see like uh, mountains start to get the new snow on top of the mountains, and then you start to see the colors. And the, the air is often like a very crispy. You get great blue sky, the white, really, really white snow on top of the mountain, the new snow, and then color of the autumn leaves on the trees and on the ground. This is really, really nice. And I would like to show to everybody. So when I include, I invite my friends or family, I always tell them to come to Norway in autumn time. And that's my personal favorite time, as I said. So this is one of the itineraries that I'm actually uh, promoting my neighbor country, uh, Finland as well. Many people actually know that the northern lights are possible, of course, winter time, but it starts already towards the end of August and September. Already it's possible to see the northern lights. But something special about autumn northern light aurora is because the lakes are not frozen, you can see the reflection when you have the northern lights up in the sky. 
then you see like a reflection on the water and we call it double aurora. And this is all, only possible before the snow starts and before the lakes in Finland gets frozen. So this is itinerary that's actually covering from uh, Finland, uh, coming over to Norway side. And all the stays are actually by the uh, lakes or fjords so that you can have the chunk double aurora as well as you enjoy the beautiful autumn color. So this is something that I would like to recommend to people to try. And maybe if you ever wanted to try the Iglo hotels in Finland, which is quite difficult to get the space and the conditions are very hard, but autumn is better. So if you want to try the autumn uh, trips like this one is combined with Finland, then you can try Iglo hotel as well if you want to try it. And then this is winter. And if you see this picture, then you think that, no, this is not for normal people, normal tourists. My guests will never go there. But this is not the case because this is actually a picture taken from right by the Flom Railway. Uh, this is actually the second station from the Flom Railway. It's going, going down to Batnahausen, uh, which is on the Flom Railway line. And this is the scenery that you can see actually in the wintertime from Flom Railway. So you don't have to go up on the mountain hike or go ski. You can actually enjoy this scenery in winter. And winter always, of course, northern lights. But I would like to also show you that it's possible to travel in the fjord area. And it's as beautiful and you don't have many people around you at all. So you get to see these uh, tourist places by yourself almost. So this is one of the itinerary suggestions. This is the typical, typical summer itineraries. And I just want you to just uh, remember that it's possible to do it throughout the winter time as well. So Bergen Railway, which is considered to be a roof of Norway, uh, because it goes up very high on the plateau of Hadangevita National Park. And the top station is 1,222 meter above sea level. So you can imagine that the, there are lots of snow in winter time. And you go through the snow and the beautiful landscape. And you can come down to the fjords and see beautiful fjords in winter time and stay there. And this itinerary is actually showing you the other boat uh, cruise possibilities from Bergen to actually Denmark. If you come by a uh, pin air or actually Scandinavian Airlines, it's easy to fly between the Scandinavian countries. But if you use Turkish Air, Qatar, Emirates or any other uh, those airlines, they would only fly to capitals. So you might have some issues with like a traveling between the countries. But this actually solves you this problem because you can fly to, for example, to Stockholm or Helsinki, wherever that is uh, by Emirates or Qatar or whatever airline. But you can go by LDC or you can go by train to Oslo and you can do all those the uh, fuel tour and you can come to Bergen and you can have an overnight cruise taking your LDC down to the northern part of Denmark and then you can go down to uh, Odense which is also a very nice place to visit and then you can come to Copenhagen without flying anything into Scandinavian cities then you can actually come to uh, Denmark so you can cover like three or four countries without flying between these cities so you can safely use Qatar or Turkish or Emirates or whatever uh, airlines to come to the capital. So this is also a nice thing to know. And this is also showing you the northern part of uh, Finland and Norway. And as I said, Norwegian Lapland has more capacity. So if you want to come to northern part of uh, Lapland, then you can also visit northern part of Norway and enjoy northern lights or snow hotels or scooter or reindeer safari. Whatever you want to do is possible in Norway or Sweden or Finland. And this is also winter wonder of uh, Norway. And this is actually using the domestic flight. But I just wanted to show you if you want to do two things uh, on your bucket list, which are probably see the Norwegian fjords because it's beautiful and the northern lights, then you can actually combine them in one trip. You don't have to make two trips because there is actually a flight from Bergen to Tromsø. So you can do all those like the normal fjord tour and come to Bergen and you can fly up to Tromsø and cover both things, northern lights and the fjords. 
So this is also a nice thing to know. So I'm just mentioning this itinerary here for you. And for those who have actually mice and the corporate customers, uh, this is just to show you what kind of places we have. So this is not the deep down into mice, but just to show you what we have here. So this is the, something that we do. We love receiving your mice uh, uh, customers. Maybe some of you might recognize this picture, but we do everything to actually help your customer because we are here in local office and we know the people and we help you with anything that you need for your incentive for corporate customers. And this is the one of the uh, well, few of the samples for some activities, uh, going on a cruise or kayaking or play game like Vikings, or you can do the zip line from the ski jump, or you can have the whole year my experience of the snow activities. This is something new that actually opened this year. And you can do the skiing or you can do the snow activities in summertime indoors. So this might be a nice thing to try for maybe some of the incentives. You can do the rip boat or you can do the normal uh, fjord uh, trips with the railway and the boat, or you can go to north. Winter activities, you know that we can see the northern lights, you can have the dinner cruise, or you can have a snowshoe hiking in a beautiful scenery, and uh, reindeer safari, or visit the biking, or do the whale safari, and the husky safari. So all those things are also great activities for winter. And the special venues or gala or whatever events that you might want to do, these are actually a mixture of different places, but this is like a venue in Oslo. This one is up north, the Snow Hotel. It's a great place to have the cocktail, for example. This is Ram Ship, the museum, but you can actually have the dinner on board the Polar Ship Ram, which is a very, very nice experience. This is the Walmons. It's like an entertainment dinner show, which you can actually join as well with your customer and a Viking theme banquet or a beautiful fjord cruise on this uh, nice uh, uh, premium boat, both in the uh, Sogne Fjord area or Oslo Fjord area. And this is Noscape and also a beautiful venue for actually event. Special accommodation for those people, uh, not for the big, big, big group, but for those people who actually are looking for some unique experience and off the beaten track, definitely. So snow hotel or beautiful fjord hotel or fisherman's cabins or unique cottages and tent uh, for those who want to go like a comfortable glamping, that's also possible here. And then uh, uh, this is actually just to show you some of the things that you can buy normally. Uh, some of the souvenir suggestions that you know that trolls are from Norway and you can have like a cute souvenirs or all those things like a black cheese, cheese slicer, different things that you can buy in Norway here. And what I would like to say is that the beautiful uh, outdoor clothing in Norway is something that you should actually spend and invest on. I know that it's not cheap, but uh, they are actually lasting lifetime quality and very nice uh, sportswear as well as design things. So these are some samples. And uh, there are some of the brands that we have the uh, flagship stores either in Oslo or Bergen. So these are the like clothing brands that's probably made it uh, international and some of the shops in Norway. So if you are interested in this uh, information, Karen can always share with you all this information. So I'm just showing you some of the shopping situation and the shopping streets in Oslo here. And the big shopping centers and some of the shopping centers are right next to the hotels that you may use. So that's also very convenient for your guests. And uh, for those who are interested in outlets, we have uh, one outlet outside uh, of Oslo. It's about half an hour drive, and it's called it's the place called Best B. This one. And eating in Norway, I'm just going to take you through to some of the restaurants and some of the food. Uh, this one is actually the restaurant under water. It's called Under. 
It's uh, now listed on the Michelin's uh, restaurant guide, and it's extremely difficult to book, and the condition is extremely difficult. And of course, the comes with the price as well. But it's a unique, unique restaurant that opened recently, and you can see that it's under the water. So Norwegian food, of course, you don't forget about these seafood. Uh, welcome to a seafood nation. So we have all those beautiful Norwegian salmon, prawns, uh, nice fish soup or cod, uh, beautiful food. Uh, these are all seafood that you can actually enjoy and include in your tour. And uh, these are also some samples of the seafood. And for those people who like meat, then we have also those traditional meat food, meat cakes or the mixture of the stew or reindeer meat, of course, the uh, lamb, cabbage stew. So these are like a traditional Norwegian meat food, uh, which you can also enjoy. And the sweet stuff. Uh, waffles are really, really uh, popular. All the Norwegian families own the waffle maker, and whatever happens, that they would probably have waffles as often as you really want to do it. And then there's, these are really also nice things to try. So when you come to Norway, you can try any of those things. Waffles are really nice with a coffee stop. So if you don't want to have like a waffle as a dessert or anything, but you can also include coffee stop and the waffles and all the sweet. Uh, delicious things. And then uh, these are Chinese restaurants that are actually in Oslo. So just introducing you some of the uh, partners that we work with and we know that they are serving quite good food and also some Norwegian food restaurant. These are the samples of the restaurant that uh, you can also have a look. And then uh, I just wanted to mention this is uh, something that everybody knows or that nobody knows, but uh, you know the popular Disney's Frozen film was inspired from Norwegian landscape, a legend. So the Frozen one was more like uh, from area or the different areas in Norway, also a little bit up north, but the Frozen 2 was actually based in the legends and the scenery of Norwegian Lapland as well. So unfortunately, Disney doesn't allow us to use any of those pictures and you can't mention it easily in the brochure, but we can also remember that the Frozen was actually inspired by Norway. So all those things that I have introduced you, and I would like you to say that Norway has a slogan now, dream now and travel later, and Norway is powered by nature, so I will be very happy to welcome you all to Norway when you have a chance. Okay, thank you, Karen, I'll give it back to you. Thank you, Masako San. I hope that we also inspire some of our agents and also tour leaders to welcome back soon in Norway and all this region. So maybe I, I would like to introduce you and invite you for the Q and A uh, session. Um, any question you can raise now uh, for Masako, myself, and the sales team, or maybe can raise later uh, to our sales team, so that we can respond to you on the concern and on any question you may have. So maybe your time now sharing with us your question or maybe your concern. You can unmute yourselves or maybe you can use the chat function for the question. <laughs> 